guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is Watch Mojo CEO and founder Ashkan Garbis Rushan to discuss a lot of things. Oh boy. Uh, so, Serena Williams has started a venture firm for investing in women and people of color, etc. Meanwhile, uh, women who have been whistleblowers in the Me Too movement cannot find work, while the men who have been accused in the Me Too movement can. Are these two things related? Are we? We're just relating a lot of things. Um, what do you? What are your thoughts? And then I will tell well, you why you're wrong. Let's start with you. Um, <laughs> do you think these things are related? Do I? I mean, I yeah, I guess so. I mean, there are lots of challenges for women and people of color in the industry, or in any industry in the world. Um, but so, I, any leg up they can get, this is just another one of those. So challenges. I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth. But I will say that it was very trendy and fashionable last year for a lot of execs and board members to kind of be like, oh yeah, this is bad and you know, we got to put an end to it. And I think a lot of them viewed it as like an opportunity where they almost had to overshoot and push a lot of people off the boat. And I would say, and I'm not judging, I swear, but I would say like maybe 97.5% of the people should have been shot off the boat. Uh, and is there a possibility that some people were kind of victims of, you know, you know, of, uh, like a bad place at the bad time, you know, possibly. Like maybe they were severely, unfairly kind of caught along with all this crap that needed to go. Like let's set that aside as, a, as like a disclaimer. I think that ultimately, indeed, things go back, like systems and these habits are hard to shed, unfortunately. So if you are a capable, uh, and it's more also just connected more than capable male executive, I think after you've gone out to pasture, and you, unless you were like a Harvey Weinstein at the caliber of douchery, um, I think unfortunately- I think the word is way worse than douche. Yeah, it is way worse than <laughs> douche, yeah. Uh, but they're just gonna bleep me, so I'm hoping douche at least stays in. <laughs> so I think what happens is like some of these guys do ricochet, and what you see though, and I'm just breaking down for you, don't kill the messenger. I think what you see is a, maybe more of a fundamental breakdown in the HR process. Yeah, I was just and gonna say vetting that and due diligence, meaning you might Google somebody and it's still vague because like if God forbid we're just using, these people don't exist. If we have a guy Frank and Frank does one bad thing and we're like, Frank, you gotta go, we're not going to actually put out there that Frank left the company because he kept grabbing his female colleagues' buttocks. We're not gonna say that. We're but gonna the be like- But the woman can come out and do But that. the woman could come and say that, but also then they're but then afraid- she's in trouble. She's, she's in trouble. She's going to be a, a part of the media blacklist, yeah. they're calling it. So then what happens is Frank, it just shows that he kind of left and it's vague as LinkedIn is updated. And even if there's an article, then it's like, well, he's got the, you know, the, the skill set that we need. Then you interview him and it's like, oh, then that guy, instead of being in the 98%, he plays himself up to be in the 2%. He's like, you know what? I dated a girl and it was consensual. And, and again, I'm not defending, I'm giving you the breakdown of these are Isn't things. Isn't it better though to just hire someone who doesn't have any of this baggage? Yeah, but people are hired like in droves, but then you still need more people. So there's that people that slip through the cracks, right? So I think now that explains why the men come back. The women, I think, unfortunately, are labeled as troublemakers. I would not support or agree that. My eyebrow cannot come down. <laughs> I, I think that there are a lot of people, and this is not just the men, right? It's the woman who are like, you know what? Oh, she, again, now the woman, let's break it down, 99% are, didn't ask for it. And it's 100%. Nobody then, asked no, for no, it. No, no, not ask for it. 1% maybe went out consensually with a colleague. It ended poorly. There was a scene, and then the stereotypes come out. But that 1%, casts doubt on the 99%. Again, I'm, I say the things that like One people want to say. Spoils the whole exactly. Thing, yeah. But even it's not about Apple. She never said, she never did no anything way. to merit that. But oh, it was consensual and you know she dated two guys at work over 5 years. She's a floozy. You know all these things that are unfair. Floozy. You use floozy? Again, I, <laughs> I figure they're not going to believe that. I mean, they're going to believe everything else. So, because of that 1, you know, in, in, percent that maybe kind of cast out on the others, then everybody is seen as a troublemaker and then the reverse happens where, again, this is so not PC, I don't feel this way, but sometimes you just are looking to hire a woman or a person of color or a member of the LGBTQ community to just check off a box. That's how these companies think. When these companies, what did I say in that context, is, um, in that CID video, when these big corporations have these flashy, snazzy areas on their website about diversity and integrity and you know fairness, it's bullshit. 
They don't want to deal with that. I'm telling you they don't want to deal with that. It's a cost, it's a pain in the butt. And there's this other body, this government body, somebody else is forcing them, right? So they don't genuinely want to help. Similarly, nine times out of 10, and obviously these, these odds and ratios are not, but you get the point I'm making. They don't care, so they'll hire somebody. But if they feel like, ooh, we could hire Shelly, but Shelly cast a complaint when she was at XYZ, we don't want that. Because I don't want her to misinterpret what I said and have problems at home and at the office. So they find it, it's harder for them to find work. It's super unfair. And the reason why I said let's connect these mm -hmm. is because here comes Serena. Yeah. Now, to a lesser extent. Does it have to be a, like an only women in an organization so there's no misunderstandings, basically? Sorry? Well, so, well you, you're so saying it. No, no. Oh, no. That, well. Do, do there have to be women-only organizations just so that they don't even have to deal with these problems? Let the record state that I don't think the answer is women-only organizations, but I think trying to take... I don't think that either. That, yeah, by the way, we're just, we're, we're kind of throwing out crazy this is ideas. all devil's advocate. Yeah. Imagine if you had an organization of like 10 guys, 10 white guys, all 40s, they grew up for like conditioned for 20 years as adults to be a certain way, and then conditioned for 40 years as, as young men, as Kids, boys, boys will be boys. What does that I mean? Just boys will be boys alone. Ugh, As, okay. It's one of my least so, favorite So for things. 40 years, they've been a certain way. All of a sudden, the Me Too stuff happens, and every 10, 20 years, Anita Hill, there's something else that for, for a short period of time, everybody wants to behave. Now, and like I've ran this company from day one with my wife. Sincerely, I want to behave and be a good human being, but you can imagine if I ever set something out of line, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a conversation about it pretty soon <laughs> in the car, like walking to the car, right? So. Conditioning is key, and we've had these discussions internally as these issues come up, and I go, it's conditioning. You do have to punch a bully in the head to make them stop. But the point I want to make is, so men have, uh, unfortunately, and most of these men, it's benign. It's, it's, it's harmless fun. That's also the thing. Not every guy that makes a joke, because then... Well, saying it's harmless, though, is a bit... I, it's diminishing but, but I don't the effect want it, on the But I don't the want the, the people to go, oh, so you're saying like the second, like only black people could be discriminated against, only white. So I'm saying I understand that a lot of what goes on may be harmless and doesn't really necessarily even have spillovers, but because it's like a, a white boys club. If you had, like, let's introduce a woman in this dynamic. They start to act a bit differently, but then they still have the same childish behavior by themselves. Then the woman is not in the group. So it's like, Diversity versus inclusion. Now there's a black guy. And all of a sudden, that joke that they would have made a year ago, they don't make it, but they still feel that way. So again, it happens in a silo and behind the scenes. I'm not telling you that this is good. I know, but I think the idea is that we're trying to change society so that they never would have made that joke in the first Fair place. Fair enough, but that's not a flip of the switch overnight. So as an extreme, is it really that crazy for Serena to come? I'm not saying this is what she's doing, and be like, we're gonna fund an organization by a woman, and we're gonna, and again, this is not what she's doing, I'm not putting words in her mouth, but it'll be predominantly woman early on. And we're not saying we're gonna segregate against men, but then over time, I feel like as crazy as it is, in five, 10, 15 years, that might create a more of a 50-50 true representative than overnight taking an organization, a frat house essentially, and pretending it's not that, and the reality is these are private organizations that don't need to all of a sudden be like, we have 50% women. You know what I mean? So I think in our case, again, given the very unique trajectory and history of the company, it's not representative per se. But I kind of, when I see this, I'm like, yeah, you know what? If a woman, wealthy uh, individual like Serena wants to come and she's married to a successful entrepreneur, very successful investor, and he brings a certain street cred and know-how, I think he, she should, as crazy as it is, she should fund it predominantly... It is 0% crazy. No, sorry? It's not crazy. It, no, that's it. Yeah. She should fund predominantly woman-driven organizations, have the odd guys, but keep the same ratios as you see in other organizations. And then over time, if you see one performing the other, we have to stop like trying to be so PC that then everybody has vegetable lasagna. I can't even say vanilla. That would offend people. That's really? That's a joke. Oh, I was like, no, no, I'm kidding. I didn't know that. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think, uh, I don't know. But would you do that or do you what think that's I... crazy? Like if we said we're gonna launch a new business and this one is only blacks or whites, I'm not again supporting this, we're just playing devil's advocate. <laughs> Does that seem like a crazy? Or is it, is it basically- Well, isn't is the that what affirmative action is? But no, but affirmative action, I think point? it's- To a point. It's, it's, a, it's the opposite of affirmative action, in my opinion. It's like you actually, it's, it's like more almost segregation, which is not what we're calling. Ooh, 
No, I mean, my point is, I think if you wanted to have true change over a long period, saying that we are committed to having an organization that is consists of female majority leadership, female majority headcount, is not that crazy compared to saying we're going to accomplish change by ensuring that two women out of 10 are, uh, two execs out of an executive team of 10 are women. I don't see that, well, that really making that is the what change. affirmative action. No, affirmative action is that, but I said if you just go hardcore with this is predominantly women, right. I said that's the opposite of affirmative action. Affirmative action would be like you still need men in there, it's got to be representative. And yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Who's going to sue us after this yeah. video? Who's going to sue us after this uh, Let us know in the comments what you think, and we'll see you next time.